What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. This is episode one of three on how I'm gonna build this enclosure. It's still unfinished at this point, but if you wanna see me get this finished, then drop that subscribe button down below. This is gonna be the best CR10 enclosure that you're gonna get on YouTube. I've basically looked for one, I found the cheap ones at like 90 pound, and I'm gonna build this beast for less than 90 pound. So let's get straight to it. So then to start with, I've had to come up with a design. So basically what I want to do is I want to get some MDF board, I want to make a box with it, I want to possibly make some storage underneath, and I want the full front of it, I want half of the front to lift up so I've got access to the size of the printer as well. So I've taken some measurements of my CR10, I'm going to get down to the hardware store now, and I'm going to pick up some wood. One thing I did find out, because I've called around, usually when I do projects like this, I call like local um, timber merchants and stuff like that. And now recently I've found that if you're in the UK, being Q were doing such a good deal on cutting wood they're charging like 50p a cut when I went to the local timber merchant they were charging more for the wood and more for the cuts as well so I went straight to B&Q to get this done I normally wouldn't like to go to bigger big retailers like this I like to use my money at the more local stuff but for the price difference I'm getting the wood for this enclosure and cut to size it's uh, it's been quite quite phenomenal and what I will say is you don't have to get it cut to size at a place you can cut it to size yourself but one thing to ensure when getting it cut by some of these places they'll make sure it's absolutely square whereas if you cut it yourself if you're off just a little bit a millimeter each side by the time you get to the end of the box you're going to be fixing stuff in pulling stuff in tight where it shouldn't really be tight and I'm sure you'll get a quality product to the end of it but you're definitely going to get a better product by getting someone to cut it for you on a proper machine So it's pissing it down now, of course, in England. So I'm going to leave the MDF in for today and uh, get it out another time. Because uh, although MDF is great for getting a good finish and it's cheap, it hates water. So if it is raining when you're doing it, just like I am, then you definitely try and keep it dry because it'll just soak all the water up. And uh, I'm just going to leave it back there. Don't worry about the baby. He's in the back holding the MDF down. Just kidding. So we had a bit of a break in the weather, I managed to get it in. Doing it in the front room because it is still raining outside but the wife loves it when I work in the front room. Favourite thing ever. So I'm going to try and get this assembled. I'm not going to go through the full assembly because I feel like you probably know how to build a box. But what I will do is I'll just show how I'm making some of the joints and um, yeah, I'll put the measurements and stuff down below so you can take the measurements. But uh, it's pretty simple, you're just going to be connecting them. You can use angles to connect them or what you can do is i'm going to use a little drill bit that basically does a pilot hole and it countersinks it as well so it just gives it that nice finish certainly with mdf i mean i've had to go 18 mil which is absolutely ridiculous for this it's going to be well heavy once it's done but if you were going like 12 or 9 mil you definitely want to put a pilot hole i might get away with not doing one in this but if you go any smaller your screw will just split the wood definitely with mdf and plywood that sort of stuff you can get away with like solid pine or stuff like that without doing the pilot holes but for sure when you're working with like cheaper wood like this get your pilot hole in there and also pva glue you don't have to get the gorilla stuff what i've just bought i just got that because i like it and that's the last one i had but it's just it's just pva at the end of the day so you can get that cheap you don't have to pay one million pounds for a 200 milliliter bottle like i just did but um yeah let's get straight to it i'll just i'll just do a little fast fast motion video of me doing it um, and then I'll just superimpose some of the joints and explain what I'm doing. Let's get to it.
Shanda, do you want to help me make the box? Yeah, let's make the box. So I've uh, I've had my break now. Just going to get back to it. I'm just what I'm what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to do the other side now. Um, then I'm going to do the bottom, and I'm going to leave the front and the top because I'm planning on trimming them and doing some kind of little funky door movement. Uh, it'll make more sense when I do it later. But um, yeah, just going to do the other side. Do the bottom. I did try not using these, even though I've got them. Tried not because it would be much easier if I didn't have to drill a pilot hole for every single one. But yeah, it's right on the verge of splitting the wood on this, so for sure, if you don't get 18, which I suggest you don't, because you don't need 18, I just got it because that's all they had, um, then yeah, definitely pilot all it, and you're gonna wanna get some with some counter sinks as well. You can get them in separate parts, but I just had these, so um, yeah, pilot all and counter sink, because this is right on the verge of splitting. I got three good fixings there, but on one of them, I did notice it um, pulling away a little bit. So yeah, let's get straight to it. Fell on the other side. I'll do a little close-up of what I mean by piloting it and uh, countersinking it, just in case you don't know what I'm on about. But yeah, let's get back to it. Right then, so, pilot all and countersink. So what you wanna do is, because this is 18 mil ply, you wanna half that distance, so nine mil. I mean, I'm just gonna estimate it here, just cause it's like close to a centimeter, so it's easy to do. And the method I use for this is I just use a pencil and I use my thumb as a little break, my finger as a little break, and I can just run. A nice neat line down here. So if you bump into the same issue like I have and you need a bit more depth than your um, small one will, will give you, you're gonna have to take the full drill bit out, drill your pilot all separately. Drill your pilot all separately. And then, Go around there with a countersink afterwards. Um, make sure these are lined up. These screws, if you're interested, these are called inch and a half eights. You can get the eights in varied, varied lengths. These, these are the main ones I stock with a posit. Um, very useful. So a bit of a botch there, that started splitting that wood. I put another screw in there to hold that wood tight. I mean, once it's all once it's all dried and I get this glue in place, it's very easy to fill this sort of stuff. You can add a bit of sawdust to some glue and just wipe it in all these cracks. Probably not so much of an issue for me because I'm carpet wrapping it, but um, if you were planning on leaving it bare, it would be very easy to fix this. So I'm just gonna go down here um, in fact, I'm probably just going to put three in here, just to keep it neat, and uh, I'm definitely going to be pilot holding these ones. This wood that I got, because I couldn't get it all out of one piece, so I needed um, another bit of wood and they had like an off cut that was like in the discount aisle um, don't do that because this off cut is bored it's split it's making a bit of a nightmare out of this project and it would be much easier if that was straight and I'd pay the extra money to make it straight if I could go back in time um, so now I've done that I did have this is the front and this is the top I've just fixed the front in place at the bottom so I can draw a line because what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line along this false, false bottom so then I can cut a little funky door on this so that it can all lift up 
but in the bottom I'm either going to be putting my I'll put my control box in there or potentially maybe have some filament storage or just something else it's nice to just lift it up off the deck a little bit as well just so you've got a bit more storage or so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pencil I'm going to draw a line just in here I'm going to take that back off and then I'm going to cut it and fix that bottom bit in place. So I've been demoted to continuing this in the games room. Not much space here. I've had loads of deliveries, so I've got parcels everywhere. Um, as you can see, I just proper fuck that first cut up i thought i could put like a straight edge there and use it as a guide with a jigsaw um, if you have a circular saw that's perfect for that i don't have a circular saw i may do with a jigsaw so that first cut is really really bad so i'm probably going to try and utilize some of the spare wood that they gave me just so i can at least get the bottom bit correct and then on the top bit i can have it overhanging a little bit and uh and like sand that in because I wanted a bit of curved finish on the top anyway but yeah don't do what I did there to start with <laughs> certainly try and uh, I mean even a hand saw is probably better than a jigsaw but I did, I did what I did deal with the consequences now hopefully we have better luck than I did so I'm going to use a bit of this scrap wood make that cut again and then I'm going to start fixing it to this I want to make the front so it's removable so um, I'm going to fix the bottom on now to make it square and then I know what hole I've got to cut for the front and then I'm going to cut this bottom bit again I understand that I've not done a very good job of explaining it so far so it should stop taking shape now so you can understand what I'm trying to do with it let's crack on in this very very tight room